Megan? Red or the blue? Well, as you may have guessed by now, they're actually exactly the same size. I mean, I, I've taken note of the fact that here recently on television, there are dozens and dozens of shows about magic, okay? But it's not new. You know, I've taken it back, it goes back to, to Babylon, it goes back to before, it goes back to Egypt. Um, it, it's always been around. You know, I, I think of people like uh, Eric Weiss. You know Eric Weiss? Yes. No. The great Houdini? Yeah. Okay. Everybody knows him as Houdini. His, act, his real name um, was Eric Weiss. He was Jewish. His father was a rabbi. He was very much into the occult and into, into I mean, there yes. was a spiritual component. And nobody could figure out how he did the things he did. And it looks like he has this incredible power, but it's all trickery. It's all trickery. Okay. Remember, Jesus said, speaking of the end times, when they came, you know, and this is in Matthew 24, and they said, "What will be the signs of your coming in the end of the days?" Right. And and Jesus warned them, saying, "For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect." Matthew 24, 24. So do you think that's, that's an incredible satanic power? Well, if the Word of God is true, and trust me it is, he's been disarmed. He has no real power. It's magic. Trickle. It is sleight of hand. It's deceit. It's, okay? That's why it says we're not to lean on our, on our own understanding. Your senses, my senses, can easily be deceived. It's one of the... I've, actually taking time to watch a couple of these shows on television it's about amazing. how easily your brain can be deceived. Yes. Yeah. And it's fascinating. I mean, people know that it's coming and still so, can't, can't deal with it. Um, people see things differently. You know, I, I flew as a crewman in the United States Navy, and one of the things that we were trained about was vertigo. Mm. And that, that's why if you fly at all, you have to understand that you must trust your instruments because your your senses can be so fouled up. I, an experiment you used to do. I used to do an experiment when I did Bible studies way back in, in the late 70s in, in New York. We had a little stool that spun around, right? And you put somebody on it and you close their eyes and you spin them around a little bit and you ask them which direction are you going and they'll immediately tell you the correct direction. And then, you know, if they keep their eyes closed and you stop them and say, okay, what direction are you going now? And they will tell you, well, I'm going the other way. Well, they're not going anyway at that point. They're stopped dead. But it, it is simply a matter of physics. You see, you, you know movement by the fluid in your ear canal. And when you start spinning one way, that fluid flows and does something in your ear that sends a signal to your brain saying you're going in that direction. But when you stop that fluid starts to go back and it sends a signal to your brain saying you're going the other way even though you're not moving. I had a pilot, when I had a, an advertising agency, I've had advertising agencies and we had a client in the Bahamas and I had a pilot who did some work for us and had him fly me and my art director over to the Bahamas to spend time with a client over there. And on the way back, I decided this guy would not be my pilot anymore. Because first of all, we're coming in, we're supposed to check in at West Palm Beach, the International Airport. You have to clear customs when you come back in. And as we're flying in, uh, I'm sitting in the in the I'm sitting in the right seat, he's in the left seat. And he the the tower comes on and says, you know, turn left ninety and for approach. And he turns right ninety. And I said to him, I'm not gonna mention his name, I said to him, you know, the tower told you to go the other way. Well, he was looking out his window at Lantana Airport, and he thought that that's what the, the tower was referring to. So he made a decision on his own that, that the tower made a mistake and he's going in the wrong direction. Because he was relying on his sight. He was relying on his understanding of what he was seeing. Then we got in the plane and headed from West Palm to Orlando, and along the way we encountered some bad weather, and there was zero visibility. And so again, I got you know he's sitting here in the 
left, and now I'm sitting on the right. And I'm just kind of relaxing, nothing to see. And I look down at the instrument panel, and we are in a nice dive, in a wrong attitude. Altitude. Attitude. Attitude. In other words, yeah, we're losing altitude oh. and in the wrong attitude. Gotcha. And you couldn't feel that. So I said to him, again, I said, you know, are you aware of the fact that we are headed for the ground? And he wasn't, because it just doesn't register with your senses. So you have to keep alert. Yeah. It's kind of like the boiling frog. There's so yeah. much, but this is where you really, you know, we did a biobite not long ago uh, called uh, Optical Illusions. Yes. yes. And it is so fascinating how easily we can be deceived. This is why, you know what, the instrument panel that God has given us is his word. That's always correct. So this is what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. To be led by the Word of God, a, a lamp and a light that, you know, that is there to guide us. So, But we have to train ourselves. It is the natural man that is always looking to operate by what he sees, what he feels, by your senses. Thy word is strength. Thy word is power. Your word is kind, and your word is true. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid, O oh God, in my heart.